adduction. Shoulders a little bit internally rotated, elbows flexed. And now I want to just stabilize the shoulder here. I'm not pushing down too hard, I'm just stabilizing. And then I hold both hands and I create this motion. I'm pushing down and we're noticing a decent amount of, of resistance there, which is fine. I need to hinge that space. Pushing down like that. Make sure it's not hitting me, so that's good. Are you okay with that? That's good. So, off in, in each one of our shoulders, this position is going to close off that space. It's going to happen. And what you'll notice is it'll, it'll actually feel more like a bony end feel. So you're really closing off that space. But if you don't have impingement and that tissue's not flared up, that tissue's just going to move out of the way for a second. Obviously, if we held that there for a long time, it wouldn't be that comfortable on anybody. We're just going there. We're feeling that end range. We're pushing through it a little bit see if there's any pain. The, the key points are I'm just letting the weight of my, my, my forearm stabilize the shoulder. But sometimes when you do this to patients, that happens. Their scapula rides up. They even side bend a little bit, and you're not actually getting that motion. I can, I can have this position make it look like I'm doing this, but all I'm doing is side bending at my low back. I'm not actually getting internal rotation there. So just watch for that. I, I stop it by just keeping my forearm there just to make sure that shoulder's not hiking an exorbitant amount. So now nears, and again, all orthopedic tests are done bilaterally. For the sake of time, I just show you on one side. For nears, I need to just put my, my hand over the top of the scapula like this, like that. And I'm just holding that down. And I'm not pushing it down hard or anything, I'm just holding it there because now I'm going to internally rotate and then flex the shoulder until I feel like it's not going to go any further without the scapula moving. If this goes any further than here, it's all scapula. See how that happens? I kind of let up, and there we go. So hold it down, push it up. Push through a tiny bit into that space. Uh, it's a little bit sore towards end range, but not bad. Push it through a little bit. Okay. Yep. Good. So there may be a little bit positive with uh, with the, the first part of Nears, but Hawkins Kennedy was negative, so I'd, I'd be a little bit suspect about that. It could be. If you notice, most of these tests except for like one or two, have, don't have very good specificity. So if you get a positive, you still really don't know that it's definitely a I think specificity on this is 60, uh, 68. So yeah, you get a positive, we still don't know. That could be other things. And the interesting thing is if, if you just skip to the end of the, the, uh, the handout, I got a kind of uh, evidence-based grouping. And for subacromial impingement, the evidence-based grouping is Hawkins-Kennedy painful arc, which is just a movement that's described at the end of the document. If for spinatus strength test, th those three put together actually are really good, give you a really good likelihood ratio for subacromial opinion. So, infraspinatus strength test isn't really even testing for impingement. That's just testing the strength of the infraspinatus. But if you combine those three things together, you get a really good uh, uh, predictive value for uh, subacromial impingement. So what I'd like you to do is take just a, like three minutes each person.